PwC is under fire for leaking confidential tax secrets from the government. They're using some inside information, some intel they were gleaning from the government. The PwC scandal should be a catalyst for the breaking up of the big four accounting firms. We failed the standards we set for ourselves as an organisation. It was another day of reckoning for PwC's management. This time, the acting CEO appears in public for the first time at a New South Wales parliamentary inquiry. We deeply regret and I deeply, deeply apologise for the confidentiality breaches that happened um, back in 2015. It was revealed PwC didn't begin investigating the scandal until weeks after a trove of emails were released. They show 63 partners and staff receive confidential government information which the firm used to help clients sidestep multinational tax avoidance laws. We will expect to announce consequences and they will be severe. The firm is selling its government consulting division to private equity firm Allegro for $1. 130 partners and almost 2,000 staff will move to the new entity codenamed Bell. That may include some of the 63 people caught up in the scandal. If you can put yourself in the position of a young person who gets copied on an email and does not understand any of the confidential information that might have been shared, you know, those people will be, um, you know, effectively cleared through this process. Labor Senator Deborah O'Neill has likened the sale to a phoenixing operation. I remain very concerned about the contagion effect of essentially rebranding the same old PwC into a different business. Senator O'Neill is now heading a new inquiry into PwC and other firms. She's flag regulation could be on the cards. We have a self-regulation model operating in this sector. I, I don't think it's too much to say that it's palpably failed. The sale of PwC's government consulting business comes after nine of its senior partners were forced to go on leave over the tax leaks. The AFP is investigating criminal charges against former partner Peter Collins, who allegedly leaked confidential information. And corporate regulator ASIC is examining whether it could act against individuals involved in the leaks. We should be banning PwC and any entity it creates from new government work. And we should be referring the whole company to the National Anti-Corruption Commission. Former ACCC Chairman Alan Fell says this is just the beginning of further splits in the auditing and consulting functions of big four firms. There will be a total breakup of the firms and they'll stick to their traditional audit function and do nothing else and the other business will be sold off to other operators. It remains to be seen if its incoming new CEO Kevin Burrows can stem a global fallout of the tax leak scandal. Co-writer of a book on the major accounting firms called The Big Four, author Stuart Kells joined me earlier. I asked him if PwC's move can restore trust in the firm or if it raises concerns about phoenixing, as Senator Deb O'Neill remarked. PwC have been forced to this point, but I would emphasise that it definitely does not solve the underlying problem. Um, the, the issues that Senator O'Neill and others have raised um, go much deeper than this particular uh, transaction. So stepping back to what the foundational problem was, it's really a conflict between different service lines and in particular a conflict between tax avoidance advice on the one hand and then integrity focused advice such as auditing um, and advice to government. Now this transaction relates to just one part of that which is the government services part. So the conflict between tax and audit will continue um, both in the Australian firm of PwC and in the global firm. Um, so that problem still, still continues. And then specifically in the carve out of the government services part, there are other issues as well. And so does that mean that this decision is premature? Many inquiries into the what, the when and the who remain ongoing. Yeah, it's a good argument. Uh, it does look like they're sort of jumping the gun a little bit. 
Um, I'm not sure really that they've thought through the transaction as much as they might as well uh, about how uh, it might be conceived and executed. A couple of examples of that. So the new entity is going to be a corporation, uh, a corporate structure with the ability to raise capital, but actually the, the existing entities and the existing service lines probably need more capital and have more potential for automation uh, and for um, capital injection. So things like auditing and uh, tax advice, for example, are more suitable uh, for automation and for AI, for example. Um, but also um, in carving out uh, the, the business this way, uh, there's all sorts of practical problems around uh, existing government contracts, government panels, government client files. Uh, if I were PwC, I'd be wrapping a structure around that, a high integrity structure around that, but it doesn't seem like they've done that. There is real anger in government ranks from the Prime Minister and Treasurer down about PwC's actions. Is the Allegro Fund spin-off solution something governments can work with, given the breadth and depth of work carried out for the public sector? Well, the services that we're talking about, so defence advice, health-related advice, infrastructure, they're very large, um, but also PwC's government advice, as you know, goes much broader than that. It goes to things like um, provision of staff and outsourcing services. It goes to advice directly to government departments, like the Treasury, for example. Um, so uh, we're talking about very, very significant uh, services. Um, but you know, the PwC has fundamentally made a strange sort of decision. Rather than to keep those and uh, jettison tax, uh, they've decided to um, keep the tax minimisation advice and jettison those uh, services. So it's a big gamble for the new entity to see whether the government will continue to purchase those services from um, the Allegro uh, Bell uh, entity that they're creating. So if I were the new pub, uh, private equity owners, I'd be pretty uh, wary uh, about those sorts of uh, risks. Uh, and from the PwC point of view, um, they're retaining, uh, in a sense, uh, the, the, um, the services that created the problem in the first place. Is there an argument here that the size of PwC's government business is such that it could, that it could and possibly should have been nationalised? Well, it's a really interesting question. Um, aspects of, of what they provide are pseudo-government services anyway and should be provided by the public service. So that's, that's one part of the answer. Uh, in terms of the transaction itself, um, uh, it, it'll involve a very careful look at things like files and contract uh, re relationships and uh, commitments. I would want to see a public sector scrutiny of that by a suitable body like the National Audit Office or someone like that, watching closely to see how those contracts are unwound, how files are dealt with, etc. And it, absolutely, in the longer term, uh, some of these functions should definitely be publicly provided. You already mentioned that Allegro funds should be wary of the risks in this particular deal. How much risk is it accepting and why would it accept the terms of this particular deal with PwC? Well, the $1 purchase price uh, is calculated to do a few things. It's calculated to make the purchaser feel like they've got a good deal and it's calculated to make the partners feel like uh, they've got a large stake in the new business, right? Because it means that there's not a large uh, slice going off to private equity. Um, Allegro has been pretty smart. Um, other private equity firms had the chance to do this deal and, and walked away, um, but Allegro has, I think, structured it in a way that's pretty safe for themselves. When you think about it, in a professional services partnership, it's not like buying a listed corporation that has a, a, a discrete set of physical assets and other sorts of businesses. It really is a people-based business, uh, and the main costs relate to um, partners and staff. Uh, and those costs, uh, they're limited in the downside for Allegro uh, and there's a lot of upside in terms of removing the capital constraints, removing the, um, the innovation constraints that the big four face at the moment. So um, if I were Allegro, I'd be pretty happy. Is it becoming any clearer to you what regulatory and legislative change might result to prevent similar conflicts occurring in future? 
Well, this is a problem right across the big consultancies where they're so diversified. They've got uh, tax avoidance advice happening alongside audit, alongside advice to government and other service lines. That diversified model uh, really has a use by date. Uh, and EY has tried to unwind it. Uh, that has been, uh, I think, temporarily stopped because of disagreements about, tra about tax and where tax would, would land. But fundamentally, the big four need to unwind this, um, these mega uh, diversified partnerships. Uh, and in general, uh, I think there needs to be much more awareness and much more scrutiny of the risks attached um, from these conflicting services across all sorts of professional services. Stuart Kells, thank you. Pleasure.